it's game two of a doubleheader. The Pirates and the Reds. Great job. That, uh, he might have leaned into that. Don't ain't you? no question leaned into that. Launching directly to a rules review, 505B2, the hit-by-pitch rule never actually uses the language lean in. Instead, the requirement is the batter attempt to avoid being touched by a pitched ball. If they make no attempt to avoid, leaning in is a great clue they've made no such attempt. The proper penalty is called time, and in this case, the pitch is out of the strike zone when it touches the batter, so it is a ball added to the count. Votto returns to bat. Had the pitch been located within the strike zone when it touched, it would be a dead ball strike. This is notably a different rule than college, which actually awards a penalty strike if the batter deliberately tries to get hit. So in college, Votto could actually be penalized with a strike for leading in. Easy breezy. Things are easy breezy for Cincinnati puts runners at the corners. What we're analyzing in this upcoming at bat it had a three run home run is surprise the electronic strike zone. I want to point out this batter's upper boundary of 3.20 is an exorbitantly and unusually low top value of the strike zone. For lack of more decorum, the television graphic top line intersects the batter's ass. Fortunately, I see no such glaring contradiction at the bottom of the zone. This particular batter's SC top is low, so that pitch of 3.5 that could be a strike for most hitters is a ball for him. The computer numbers say it's three inches too high. I think that line is a little bit low, so let's move it up a tiny bit. Even there, the ball's high to this batter, but to the league average, that would have been a strike. You see it in the dugout, Brian muscle memory. Why is that a ball? Now Brian Reynolds got rung up on a pitch that was up. Okay, to the fifth inning. Strike three, Cole. Now it's getting interesting. Reynolds has a taller SC top than Miley at 3.31 or 3.43, accounting for baseball radius. The pitch was 3.33 because rad is greater than PZ. The expected call is thus a strike, but the box shows it as a ball. Pittsburgh watching iPads in the dugout see the poor TV graphics, think that it's factual when, guess what? Strike three, Cole. It's not. Lentz gives a warning and we continue the at bat. That's up, and somebody's been ejected. Two ejections up front. Manager comes out, and here comes the third. If he hasn't yet been tossed, he's going to get tossed. And that's how you get three ejections in about three seconds. Let's look at the pitch first, because the ball strike ejection all comes down to it. This was more of a ball than any of them. Quite high. Remember, the formula is PZ minus rad times 12 which comes out to 4.2 inches. It's very high. I did not plan that. The manager and the umpires chat a little bit more about the horticulture and the stadium goes a little crazy. I haven't seen Derek Shelton this hot in a long time. Reynolds, of course, shaking his head. He's seen the iPad by now. He doesn't know the graphic is wrong. Miles over the speed limit. I'm standing up for his players. Shelton goes, in comes Don Kelly. Now he's going to let him have it. Kelly's argument is, why did you eject me? I didn't do anything wrong. He says, I didn't say shh. I didn't F and say shh, which gives us the opportunity to go to the tape to fact check. Surprise, you're going to hear something from the dugout. You said no, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> Don't mess with Nick Lentz. He can throw people out of dugouts like nobody's business. Then the umpire's got a right to, to stop it. With the manager, bench, and pitching coach all thrown out, who's running the team now? It looks like Rebello, I assume now, is acting as the manager. If you said third base coach, you win. Rebello is going to take over as the manager. Rebello is the third base coach. 